So one of the involuntary bonuses of getting sent devices after all the popular reviewers is that during my review time, I get all the massive software updates that fix the major bugs everyone else has complained about before I'm done my review. Anyways, now that all the major issues have been ironed out, let me tell you about this awesome phone called the OnePlus 8 Pro. So first off, overall, I like the look of the design, especially the frosted glass so it doesn't look like the window at an old school peep show. Now, I know like 99% of phones have these big ass camera bulges on the back, but I mean, we're starting to head into door wedge territory. Like how long until the cameras are so big they're acting as a built-in kickstand? We've got three colors to choose from, green, black, and blue. Uh, I like the blue color the best. They sent me the green one, so that's something I'm gonna have to live with. Uh, the buttons are bloody razor thin, which I'm not a fan of, so mine lives in a case 24 seven. Uh, this one, not this one. I, I don't like this one. Now, before I got some of those major updates I mentioned earlier, didn't matter if I had the phone in a case or not. That infinity display, which yes, looks cool, was at the top of my hate list because of the insane amount of false positives I was getting, otherwise known as shitty palm rejection. This is why I've been saying for years, just because it looks cool doesn't mean it's good. It's impractical. But since those updates, that issue magically disappeared. Like seriously, I haven't had a single palm rejection issue, which really surprised me because every single Samsung phone I've ever reviewed before the S20 line has had super shitty palm rejection, no matter how many updates Samsung sent out. So then did a small smartphone company from China just achieve what a Goliath like Samsung couldn't? I can just hear all the Samsung fanboys screaming, I never have any issues with me. Shut up, yes you do. Anyways, regardless of that fix, I still hate infinity displays and always will. But looking past that, dude, 120 hertz at QHD plus? <laughs> uh, yes, please. Right, so I was just getting used to 90 hertz displays and was loving it. Then Samsung comes along and was all, hey, check us out. We got 120 hertz display and everyone was like, ooh. And then Samsung was like, at 1080p resolution and everyone was like, oh. And then OnePlus shows up like, hey guys, so we got this 120 hertz display and everyone's like, okay. And then OnePlus is like, at QHD plus resolution and everyone's like, sorry, what? Let me tell you. <laughs> 90 hertz is awesome, but 120 hertz is like a straight shot of dopamine to your eyeballs. And then you pair that with the QHD plus resolution. You know all that scrolling you do in like 95% of the apps you use? Well, you're in for a treat with this phone. <laughs> and of course, colors, saturation, contrast, blah, blah, blah. It all looks great. It's a dope display. By the way, if you got a free base audio from the stereo speakers while watching content or whatever, You'll be happy to know they don't sound like trash. They actually sound pretty good. Would have been nice if they bumped up the mids a tad and turned down the highs just a smidge, but overall, not bad. Now, here's something strange I noticed since getting all those soft drop dates. Or maybe it was always there and I'm just an idiot. <laughs> the fingerprint reader isn't nearly as accurate as it was for me on the 7 Pro and 7T. I mean, don't get me wrong, when it's working, it's bloody quick, but there's been so many times where the display was clean, my hands were clean and dry, but it just kept failing until I rebooted and then it worked fine. Uh, I did a quick search and found a bunch of people complaining about the same thing on the OnePlus forum, so hopefully we get another update to fix that too before I throat punch someone. Know what else makes me want to throat punch someone? Getting my banking info jacked while shopping online. And that's something today's video sponsor Surfshark VPN can help with. Browser ad blockers block ads but provide literally no other protection. And that's where Surfshark VPN comes in. With Surfshark, you're totally protected from all those shady nerds trying to yoink your banking credentials and social media accounts by encrypting all your back and forth data as well as blocking ads on your computer and phone. Man, if someone leaked my Twitter DMs, I I'd be cancelled. But beyond that, let's say you want to watch some content that's geo-restricted in a certain region. Yeah, no worries. No matter where you are in the world, you can access your social media or different regions video content libraries like from Netflix or Hulu. So if I wanted to watch the UK's Netflix library, no problem. And even if your partner back home is using Surfshark to do whatever, Surfshark's the only VPN service that allows for an unlimited number of simultaneous connections across every major platform, which is perfect for families. Give Surfshark a try now by clicking the link in the description and use my promo code Jared for 83% off your subscription and an extra month free. OnePlus's Oxygen OS is still my favorite OEM firmware. It's super customizable. It's got Apple level obsessive optimizations. It's well thought out, gets updates all the time, and it's as snappy as a pissed off chihuahua. Battery life's been awesome for me. Like this entire time I've left the display settings on QHD plus at 120 Hertz 
and I've been pretty liberal with display brightness. So with its 4,500 milliamp hour battery on a heavier usage day, I typically get about six and a half to seven hours of screen on time. And on average to light usage days, I'd see around seven and a half to eight hours. I mean, that's just with my usage. So as the saying goes, your mileage may vary, but that's a day and a half to two day battery life for me which is perfect. And then if you factor in the warp charger it comes with and the new added support for wireless charging and it's like, what more could you ask for? Right then, should we talk about the cameras? Okay, why not? First up is the 16 megapixel in display hole punch camera. Note, I called it a hole punch camera, not a punch hole. There is a right and wrong way to say it. Anyways, I wasn't able to go to my usual super top secret, but not really a secret photography spots because you know, pandemics and shit, so I just drove around to a bunch of parks and beaches with my dog and took some selfies. But portrait mode handles single subject photos really well, more specifically human subjects, cause it did struggle when I had Lucy in the frame, sometimes cutting off her cute pointy ear like most phones do, but you know, snap enough shots and it'll eventually head on a winner. Skin tones look great, contrast is perfect for my taste, and what really surprised me was how well it handled highlights while maintaining some dynamic range. Uh, the rear camera setup features a main 48 megapixel wide angle, a 48 megapixel ultra wide, an 8 megapixel telephoto, and a fancy pantsy 5 megapixel color filter that helps the other cameras do some other fancy pantsy stuff. Uh, I've been really happy with the images coming out of these cameras. Colors look almost perfect. I say almost perfect because just like every other smartphone camera, it oversaturates reds like it's going out of style or something. Clarity is great if you're not directly facing a bright light source and edges and details are sharp without looking over processed. Now the plane of focus can make it hard to hit on close up subjects sometimes just cause the way these types of large sensor cameras are being built these days. But since those softer updates, it's been way more reliable with almost no focus hunting anymore. I did notice that the wide and super wide cameras seem to have a warmer white balance in the telephoto. Uh, night mode did really well as usual and even low light photos without it look fairly passable. Now 4K video recording at 30p with OIS looks Awesome, super steady motion with good shutter speeds means no stutter or jello issues. So, <laughs> at the end of the day, what we have here is OnePlus's first true flagship phone, which I really only have one major complaint for, and that's the Infinity display. Otherwise, I think they hit a mega grand slam with this one. Great cameras, great battery life, great software, constant updates, wireless charging, warp charging, IP water resistant certification, and it's 50 bucks less than the Galaxy S20, which has a smaller battery, and a lesser than display. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you liked the video. If you did, maybe show me some love with that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, but thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Cheers.